Do you make white jokes? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've yeah. been guilty of it. I don't think it's possible to be racist towards white people. Racism was invented by white people. Why do you think it's more accepted in society to make jokes about white people? Because they make jokes about the rest of us. White people have never gone through any oppression. So the question I want to ask is, is it okay to be racist towards white people? I still struggle with this myself. Despite their ancestral impact on America, it's not right to put all of them in that box. I don't think it's okay to be racist towards anyone. White people are still people. It is possible to be racist towards white people as well, yes. I don't think you can be racist towards white people. What do you mean by that? Racism was invented by white people. You can't take it out of historical context. So historically, there's been one race that has more power in the system. Racism was invented by white people to protect white power primarily. I don't think it's possible to be racist towards white people. There needs to be a system of oppression. Generally, white people are the ones controlling that system of oppression. Why do you think it's more accepted in society to make jokes about white people? Because they make jokes about the rest of us, constantly. So do you feel like you have your guard up against white people? Sometimes I do. When white people are going through hardship, they're not as sensitive to it as you would be to a black community. In general, like, white people, the privilege behind that. You make white jokes? I do sometimes, <laughs> a little bit, but I'm trying to do better. Because over the last few years, there's a growing movement where we're telling white people not only to ignore, but to accept things that we would never say to another race. Too many white people in here, and this is a space for people of color. White women. And if progress is the goal, then we must acknowledge inconsistencies and call out the double standard. Bro, you make fun of white people all the time. It's not a whitey. I mean, bro, dude, I'm just trying to make a video right now. But would questioning this issue make me a white apologist or an Uncle Tom? But more importantly, am I making the problem worse by even talking about it? Guess we gonna see. How would you define racism? Racism is judging or seeing yourself differently from somebody else because of the color of your skin. I would just say just preconceived notions about someone based on their skin color. It's like a systemic system where basically people are starting off at a way different point because of the color of their skin. Racism is made up social structure, exploits people based on their race. Globally, it seems like there's a lot of whiteness controlling racism. Is it okay to be prejudiced towards white people then? Sure. Is it okay to have prejudice towards black people? I mean, it's not okay, but I mean, I think racism describes a system of power. So for some, it seems like racism is about punching down, but not punching up. But does that mean that as minorities, we don't have the power to discriminate? Let's see what the other side would say. A lot of people these days say that reverse racism doesn't exist. What do you think about that? There's this belief that racism against the person who is most likely to conduct the racism doesn't make it racist, which is untrue. If your definition of racism is purely systematic, no, I don't believe reverse racism can exist. If it's just a matter of discrimination, then yeah, absolutely. I had a racist brother and he was indigenous. Just because you're a minority doesn't mean you, you, you don't hate. A lot of cases of racism, you find that people, they're racist is the victim of something. Do you think though, at times, people use that excuse of like, you know, you can't be racist towards white people and they mask hate with good intention? I listen to my friends who are like people of color and they tell me their experiences and how they feel and I just try to understand the best that I can. But today is a lot of the racism that we see in the West in your face or behind closed doors. So in order to address such issues, policies like affirmative action and racial quotas were introduced in the 60s to increase representations for historic disadvantaged groups. In our time, change has come to this nation too. But as we see today, controversy remains. Uh, affirmative action harms everybody, though in different ways. As Thomas so well put it, it was a break from the traditional justice of equal opportunity in applying the same rules for all to a shift towards cosmic justice with a focus on equalizing prospects and creating equality of outcome. The requirement for treating everyone the same is very simple. It's mass produced. The requirements for cosmic justice must be handmade and tailored to each individual case. And so it raises the question, can both equality and equity even coexist? But what are your thoughts on, let's say, racial quotas or diversity hiring in the context of jobs or university? Programs like affirmative action, I think are necessary. And I think they've shown to be effective at balancing income inequality between races. Job or opportunity should be given to the person who's got the best skill. I think a lot of the time, the perception of diversity hiring is that these people are unqualified, where in a lot of the times you're giving somebody the shot to show that they are qualified. If they didn't have those quotas, then less black people would be in certain programs. If they were to get assessed, they say, okay, no, I have five Asians, I have 10 black people. Isn't that they discrimination though? Of course it's discrimination, but it has to be this way because that's the world we have right. created. I would point to things like the Harvard scandal, where really, really qualified Asian kids, so they're getting left out. You can have a shitty doctor because somebody got into med school, but their scores weren't that great. But I believe in quality of opportunity 
not equality of outcome. I think that's Marxist, and you can only enforce that with a gun. I've also heard instances that it actually hurts Asian people the most, who is definitely a minority with only 6% in America. In that sense, do you think that's creating more division? I only know what I've read, and that's that they have been effective for helping historically underprivileged races. Especially for my people, for 400 plus years, we've been discriminated against and not given opportunities. I think that there's a bit of a slippery slope that happens when we bring people into certain opportunities or certain institutions simply because of their skin color. And you could even argue that itself inherently could be a bit racist. It's, it's reasonable to have an equal amount of different races involved in the workplace. But is it achievable the way we're doing it right now? No, I don't think it is. So if achieving both is impossible, is the pursuit of inclusion actually creating more division? Because if measures are becoming more extreme and opportunities are given solely based on race, isn't it just going to go back to the same equality we sought to address? Diversity matters. And, and does that include for Asian Americans? I, I'm not putting my personal opinion. I, I, he was fired for being a white male to diversify leadership positions. So besides our obvious history with race, it made me think, why is America so obsessed with race and racism? Do you think talking about racism helps the problem or makes the problem worse? I think talking about it with different sets of ideals hopefully pushes the conversation forward a little bit. Getting your worldview shattered and smashed to shit is sometimes good. White people should be talking more about race. In my social settings with white friends, it isn't brought up enough. I think there's a certain level of awareness that needs to be raised. However, bringing it up in the context of us versus them, I think that itself contributes to racism. If we keep talking about it, eventually, you know, it'll probably subside somewhat. I don't think it's going to go away, though. I think you have to look at things holistically, and you can't be just one-sided, left or right. I feel like there's always a middle ground. People respect the same bullshit topics, but no one's talking about love. Do you think minorities blame white people too much? Yes, 100% they do, because it's an excuse. Why the f are we talking about how we can connect more and actually learn about each other? Why is it always the problem we're talking about? Why not the solution? Now this may sound wild, but has this obsession with race created an environment where woke people and racists are becoming the same thing? Because if it's true, perhaps one of the first signs was seen six years ago in this small college in Washington. The annual day of absence at Evergreen State College involved minority students leaving campus for the day to raise awareness of their contributions. But then in 2017, organizers decided to reverse the rules and ask white students and faculty to leave campus instead. Get out! You're not out! Get out! Brett Weinstein, a white professor, objected, citing these demands as forced segregation and discriminatory. And soon after, Weinstein's objections were met with protests and accusations of racism as student activists called for his resignation for promoting white supremacy. I am not interested in debate. I'm interested only in dialectic, which does mean I listen to you and you listen to me. Eventually, Weinstein and his wife resigned from their positions and filed a lawsuit which was eventually settled for 500k. And so even though the protesters may have genuinely felt that they were advocating for inclusion, the reality is is that they were promoting exclusion based on race. That's how whiteness works! Whiteness is the most violent system to ever breathe! Frankly, every Every student in that hallway has a clue about where they're going wrong. And so are we continuing to head down a path of revenge masked as equality? Because as it stands, is it fair to generalize an entire group based on the actions of a few in the past? Sure, I actually think that's a really interesting question because there's a lot of research coming out about how trauma is intergenerational. So even though you may not have experienced something if your parents did, if they ever shared that story with you, you might have that ingrained memory somewhere. Okay, well then how about this? Like, I'm Japanese American, right? Do you think then like Americans should judge the actions of my ancestors, let's say, on me? I think it's important that like people have this type of dialogue, why they think a certain way, why they hold certain beliefs, and that's the only way we're going to be able to move forward as a society. Okay, but what if we take a completely different approach to it? Do you think it's okay to be racist if you're equally racist to everyone? <laughs> that's correct. Equal opportunity <laughs> racist? Equal, equal opportunity racism. Funny thing someone told me recently is they want to learn more about culture so they can be more accurate in their racism. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> why do you think I'm traveling right now? <laughs> that is that is straight dedication. Just kidding aside, is saying that we don't have the power to discriminate as minorities using victimhood to actually discriminate but on the other hand is this overcorrection necessary to correct the wrongs of the past and it seems like that's exactly what hollywood is doing whether it be indian velma or black annie a recent trend has been replacing originally white characters with minorities in the name of diversity the power of media cannot be ignored do you think that's a good way to increase representation amongst minorities or do you think that's a bit lazy anytime that we try to intentionally increase visible minority representation in the media is a good thing maybe it's 
this forceful diversity, people trying too hard to be inclusive and all that. Honestly speaking, I can't say that I looked to Disney characters or other characters to see what opportunities exist for me. However, being able to see other women of color in positions of power, whether it be in the legal force, whether it be in politics, was something that did open my eyes to the opportunities that are possible. Yes, I'm a black woman, but when they create these shows, it's like almost so far gone for me. I don't care what my skin color is, I know who I am. I think it's pandering a lot of the time. When it's just you swap out a character, you don't change the dialogue, and you say they're black now, and then you try to make yourself look good, that's that's lazy and pandering to me. It's a good point, because does Hollywood genuinely care about amplifying minority voices, or is it about the woke points? Don't you think it would also just be more effective if we actually just told real stories of minorities, of like actual people, instead of just replacing it with a wh traditionally white character? Matt Damon, who was in the Great Wall of China, and everyone was so offended. Yeah. Why is it him? Scarlett Johansson played like an Asian girl. <laughs> so it's like, is it because she's a better actress? There's no way there is a one Asian person yeah. that could have been casted that's as good as Scarlett, because Scarlett is not that great. And that's exactly why we need to explore the intention. Because besides the history of negative, racist, and emasculating portrayal of Asians in media, for years, films about Asians were being replaced with white people. But in current times, it's shifted to ignoring portrayals of white people while still continuing to focus on our differences rather than our similarities. It's white cis men who are the least grounded, most destructive race. And when media is constantly impacting how you view society, we're being taught that every societal ill is the fall of whites and that as minorities, we can say whatever the hell we want about white people. So at this point, what the hell even is a solution to a more equal society? But what I realized is that this whole time, we weren't even looking at the right problem. What do you think is a bigger problem, racial or income differences? I would say that income inequality would be worse because I think that if we were to be able to fix that somehow, then it could fix a lot of the other issues. Income inequality, I think that like, we all deserve like a certain standard of living. Yes, racism sucks, but at the same time, it's not on the level of like, people who can't eat. I think the discrepancy of income can actually affect certain components of race and how certain things are viewed and so I kind of see them as feeding into each other. Racial, absolutely. Like racial inequality follows income inequality. I think it's still racial because at the end of the day that plays into the income and everything else that goes on like the opportunities that we have. I think it all plays into it so. There's relative poverty and there's abject poverty. In the West I don't think we have abject poverty but people that are down and don't want to get up and work go bust your ass, man. Very few people that are busting their ass, I would say most of them are probably getting someplace. It may be slow but you're gonna get some place. How about like, let's say for an example, like LeBron James' son. Do you think he probably was born in a better position than let's say like a poor white kid in the trailer park? I feel like that's different. I, you can't compare the two because yeah. at the end of the day, he is a black man. He still is viewed as a black man in society. Having more money would help you get along better. You can have power and still be a victim of racism. And so no matter whichever issue is worse, why do we always hear about one but not the other? Why do you think like in the news, like we hear more instances of, I feel like a lot of the rhetoric in the media today is around racial wars. It's a way of grasping at straws and uh, dealing simply with very complex issues. But the big issue is poverty, poverty and overpopulation. People who are in charge of portraying things in the media are often very wealthy themselves, right? They don't want to shine a light on inequality. Racism seems a lot more visual. It's visual. Yeah, yeah. you get uh, that outrage response right. with racism. It's easy to be like, F that person. And when the focus is on differences, that's all we start seeing. Since 1989, Scott Adams has been best known for his newspaper comic Dilbert, as well as his books and live streams on social and political issues. However, on February 22nd of this year, it all came crashing down. This is the first political poll that ever changed my activities. On his live stream, Adams responded to a poll that asked black respondents if it was okay to be white, and the results show that 53% said yes, while 26% disagreed, and 21% were not sure. So if, if you know, nearly half of all blacks are not okay with white people, uh, that's a hate group, and I don't want to have anything to do with it, you know, based on the current way things are going. The best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Newspapers across the country are dropping the Dilbert comics. There's a line that gets crossed. What do you say to people who heard that and say, Scott Adams is racist, are you? This prompted several newspapers to drop his strip and his publisher to cancel his upcoming book. In a separate stream, Adams defended his remarks as hyperbole, and that the cancellation was based on out of context statements. If you listen to it in context, it makes perfect sense. Did I espouse racism or did I say you should try to get away from it? 
explains further that corporate influences are creating a collective narrative that people are racist and there's some amount of the black population that's poisoned. They're just poisoned by the narrative. They are victims. He further clarified his points that white Americans are demonized by the collective forces. So wherever there are groups of people who have been programmed by the media who have a reflexive bad feeling about you, I would avoid them. And so with further context, does he have a point? Every time we treat race as the way to understand anything, it doesn't work, but class does. If you look at class, it explains everything. Are we being taught through the cycle of negative media to hate one another in that it was always about the money? Especially in America, I think that the foundation is built upon differences and that's not right. I think it's on purpose. It's perpetuated through the media, through separation, through stereotype. And yeah, purposefully, we're all too mean to each other and focused on how we're not similar when we are. And so if we want more unity, we must prioritize accountability. Because ironically, it's those who claim to be the most open-minded that's actually the most closed-minded. And it's exactly why the line between woke people and racists are becoming the same thing. Do you think that's the best way to achieve equality is through hate? No. No, absolutely not. But I think you can't have those two words in the same sentence, equality and hate, you know? <laughs> because if equality is achievable, it's never through hate. But instead, it's about looking inwards and having conversations to find common ground. Because if we truly care about an issue, we must acknowledge the good and also address the bad and sometimes the ugly. And that's exactly the mission to explore the unfamiliar. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you want to see more content where I turn street interviews into investigative journalism. And if YouTube gets it right, you'll like this video too.